here to represent the U.S. forces in Britain at the ceremony. I want to express my sincere appreciation to Daphne Franklin as well, Major Doug Sparks, the Salvation Army, Barbara Neal, the 306 Bond Group Association, and Charles Neal, leader of the 306, 306 Generation Bond Group, all for your gracious hospitality today. Also thanks to Keith Hill and all of the volunteers who worked so hard to make this rededication a reality. My wife Nancy, who's here with me, with me today, and I very much enjoy living here in the UK, sometimes in the warm weather, sometimes in the dry weather, <laughs> but you're always welcoming to us. I'd like to begin with a thought from the Roman historian and politician, Publius Tacticus, who said, in valor, there is hope. Today, that message still rings true, especially on an occasion such as this, where we honor the valor-filled acts that so many military members made from this airfield. Today, we honor the 306 Bond Group and their legacy as reflected in their motto, Always First. The 306 Bond Group was the first operational bombardment group in the 8th Air Force Bomber Command, stationed here at RAF Thurley from 6 December 42 until 25 December 45 and has the distinction of being the longest continuously serving bond group for any one 8th Air Force group. Over 3,500 Americans were based here during that period. During combat from October 42 to April 45, the 306 bomb group operated primarily against strategic targets, striking locomotive works in Lille, railroad yards in Rouen, submarine pens in Bordeaux, shipping yards at Versac, ball bearing plants at Schweinfurt, oil plants at Messburg, marshalling yards at Stuttgart, a foundry at Hanover, chemical plant at Ludwigshaven, aircraft factories at Leipzig, and on and on and on. Always first, the many distinctions that were in about 306. The first 8th Air Force heavy bombardment group to complete over 300 missions over occupied Europe and Nazi Germany. The first U.S. Army Air Force heavy bomb group to attack a strategic target located in Nazi Germany when the group attacked Wilhelmshaven, led by Colonel Frank Armstrong on 20 January 43. It's worthy to note that Colonel Armstrong's experiences became the basis of a novel and subsequent film, 12 O'Clock High. On May 1942, only one month after arriving here at the 306, uh, uh, Staff Sergeant Snuffy Smith flew his first mission to bomb the harbor installations at St. Nazare, France. After bombing the harbor, the 306 turned out to sea on a northwest course to skirt the Brest Peninsula. The group somehow miscalculated and made a turn to the north and England way too early. That turn threw off the navigation to an extent that Brest, France, was mistaken for Land's End, England. As a result, the 306 flew over severe flak at Brest and lost two planes in the interim. On the way back over the channel, the plane was jumped by several Focke 190s and hit, igniting an oxygen fire. The plane was soon engulfed in flames, which grew so intense that three of the gunners bailed out and subsequently drowned. The tail gunner was critically injured and the navigator was wounded in his leg. The fire gutted the radio room and the waist of the plane. Sergeant Smith, who was a ball uh, turret gunner, disregarding his own safety, manned a waist gun fighting off the fighters, wrapped a towel around his head, and fought his way through the flames and exploding 50 caliber machine guns to the radio room, all the while throwing exploding ammo overboard before heroically fighting the flames and was largely responsible for the safe return of the aircraft to an airfield in southwest England. For his heroic actions, which helped save the lives of six wounded comrades, Sergeant Smith was awarded the Medal of Honor. He was the only member of the 306 to be awarded the Medal of Honor, your equivalent of the British Victoria Cross. The 306 went on to earn two distinguished unit citations, one for their assault against factories in central Germany in the face of powerful oppositions, and the second on a mission against the bombing of an aircraft assembly plant 
even though escort fighters abandoned the mission and turned back because of weather. When finally deactivated in December 46, the 306 Bomb Group received the Distinguished Unit Citation and the Oak Leaf Cluster and six campaign stars. In addition, members of the 306 Bomb Group earned seven Distinguished Service Crosses, five Legion of Merits, 39 Silver Stars, 1,511 Distinguished Flying Crosses, 447 Purple Hearts, 65 Bronze Stars, and 14,094 air medals. For many of these brave young men far from home, RAF Thurley was the last place that they trod on earth. And for many others, hard time in Nazi prison camps was their fate. For a total of 341 missions, 171 aircraft were lost, 836 badly damaged. And so today, we honor their valor in the ceremony. When the United States brought their airmen and soldiers and sailors to take the flight to the continent of Europe, they were brought here to the words of Prime Minister Winston Churchill to, quote, finish the job. Today, in 20 American cemeteries on European soil, more than 100,000 American service members rest in peace, knowing their valorous acts made a difference. They brought us freedom. They brought us independence. They brought us hope. <laughs> now we live in a very different world than these men. Military missions and roles have changed, but valor continues to be honored. Today, Europe is not a battlefield. It is a home to our closest allies, those who stand shoulder to shoulder with us during military conflicts, national disasters, and humanitarian missions. With shared values of democracy, liberty, freedom of speech, human rights, and respect for the rule of the law. Nowhere is this shared sense of values and partnership more apparent than in the special relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom. This relationship is the heart of the Euro-Atlantic Partnership. Our nations and our militaries are close, a product of a shared history and common belief systems. I personally can say this as someone who has lived here for many years, our relationship is indeed special. We train together, we work together, we live together, we fight together. And today, we remember together. We do have shared losses. But together, we made it through the sacrifices and the darkness and into the light of freedom. Our work in the military is founded on the belief that we ultimately make the world a better place. It is what gets us through the grindiest and greatest of times without questions. It was a Nobel Prize physicist, Albert Einstein, who said, we must be prepared to make heroic sacrifices for the cause of peace that we make ungrudgingly for the cause of war. As Einstein well understood, many of the greatest sacrifices for peace were made on the battlefield of war. Indeed, war fighters who have seen the horrors of war are often the most compelling advocates of peace. That is part of the spirit that binds our military together. And that is what we commemorate today. Thank you for being here today to honor these American heroes. May we honor their memory and our fallen British warriors' memories by living every day of our lives to the ideals they fought and died for. Again, it's an honor to serve here and to participate in this meaningful ceremony today. Thank you. <coughs>